Ask the crowd to quiet down. The ball is on the two-yard line. Here's Iowa now with the football, and it is... Not a dead bootleg, a bootleg, yeah. a Check low, a bootleg, a brilliant play. Check low, who takes the ball in? It's a touchdown as he takes the Harvard. Nobody saw it. We didn't see it. Check low, bootleg's the ball in the end zone. It's an Iowa touchdown. The Hawkeyes lost a, a precious part of our history yesterday with the passing of Jim Zabel. First and foremost, um, just to, to everybody in the family, the immediate family, uh, so sorry for your loss, but to the to the greater family, the Hawkeye family, uh, Jim touched three or four generations of, of Hawkeye fans, and we're, we're absolutely going to miss him. And we were fortunate to have him uh, in the University of Iowa's corner, although he had to be impartial as far as total sports are concerned. He was very impartial toward Iowa, I think. He was called a homer often uh, where the University of Iowa is concerned. He, he enjoyed that, I'm telling you. He loved being called a homer because he was an Iowa sports fan uh, in a broadcaster's body. And, and uh, his passion uh, carried uh, into overseas trips, you know, on the Hawkeye basketball team. I can remember specifically going to, to Paris uh, or London or Madrid or Israel or China or Japan, wherever they went. Uh, particularly in the Dr. Tom years, Dr. Tom Davis years, Z uh, looked as, as much forward to those trips as he did uh, the, the great rivalries in Ann Arbor and, and Bloomington and, and Columbus and Madison. I mean, he loved going, he loved to travel, period. Much more than this, I did it my way. I think Jim uh, bled black and gold. I don't think there's anything about, any doubt about that. Uh, as I said, he, he knew where his bread was buttered, and his, his, he was, his, his bread was buttered by the University of Iowa. Of course, he went to the University of Iowa. He was there the same time my mom was there, and uh, he, he was just uh, dyed in the wool, uh, Iowa Hawkeye, and he uh, did all the eye clubs, many of the eye clubs, and, and was a great ambassador for Hawkeye sports. You know, the thing about uh, Jim, I think, that most fans know about is Jim's frugality, shall we say? And uh, he would kid about that. You know, it was kind of, <laughs> really, it was something that uh, he was sort of proud of. I mean, it was sort of like a, a little badge. There wasn't an event he didn't like, and he was a promoter of all kinds of sports, especially at the uh, high school level. He did wonderful things for the Iowa High School Athletic Association and the Girls Union, was a, a great devotee of the Drake Relays, one of its pillars as a matter of fact, and even his Sunday bowling show was in, in the early days of television was one of the most popular things in the central part of the state of Iowa. It is Cedric Shaw breaking into the second, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Cedric Shaw in the end zone for another touchdown. Unbelievable. 30. To me, Jim's just, uh, he's a rare individual. And uh, to me, he'll go down as a, an Iowa treasure. He's truly a legendary, had a legendary career. He's a legendary person. And uh, his wit, his great humor, his positive outlook on things, uh, you know, probably, probably his best line ever was, you know, hell, uh, it was only two bad decades when he talked about the two uh, 19 years of futility in football. So uh, that, that's Jim in a nutshell right there. Found a, uh, a way to put a quip on anything that might not be so, uh, so positive, made it positive, made it enjoyable. And uh, Jim just truly enjoyed life. He truly enjoyed the people that he worked with. And, uh, you know, anytime I think of Jim, I'll certainly have a smile on my face. huge fan of, of Jim Zobel and, and everything he's meant to Iowa athletics in, in, in general and and just the coverage he's provided us, the platform he's given us and the the ability to uh, paint a picture uh, of what it was like Saturdays at Kinnick and, and in Carver Hawkeye Arena and all those different areas. So just uh, uh, Iowa's lost a great guy today and um, you know wish him and his family, the, wish, wish his family the best and uh, may God bless Jim Zobel. The question I asked is, how did that phrase, I love it, I love it, I love it, 
which has been kind of my signature phrase, how did that originate? It didn't come from way back when. And if you ask Harry Carey or if you ask any of the announcers, how did their favorite pet phrases originate? Uh, I don't think it was, a very few of them, it would be by design. I mean, I didn't say, sit down one time and say, tonight I'm gonna say I love it. But when Iowa, Tom Davis in 1987 became the first co coach and the first team ever to score 100 points on Bobby Knight, right here at Carver Hawkeye, I had to say, I love it, I love it, I love it. That's how it developed. <laughs> Simple as that. Two seconds, one second, Iowa wins. Hawkeyes win 21 to 20 over Penn State in one of the great upsets of all time. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. In Podolak, how sweet it is.